How many museums can you visit that allow you to climb, jump, and twirl on the installations? Two 10-story slides and one five-story slide. Not too many. A kid's jungle gym dream out here. It's adults too. It yeah. wasn't just built for kids. But at St. Louis's City Museum, adults and kids are encouraged to get interactive inside and even on the roof of the 600,000-foot former shoe factory celebrating found goods. We're exploring one of the coolest museums I've visited to date, City Museum, along with the diverse and splendid works at the St. Louis Art Museum in Forest Park. Really what we're famous for is we're the largest collection of Max Beckmann paintings in the world. Um, we also have his drawings and his prints. In this Travels with Darley podcast, we go around the world with locals as the guides, exploring art, history, food, culture, and adventure. And this week's podcast takes us to St. Louis, Missouri. And if you like this podcast, please subscribe and look for the video version of Travels with Darley on PBS and streaming. Housed in a former shoe factory, the City Museum feels more like a playground than a museum. Celebrating found goods that inventive artist Bob Castley decided were worth showcasing. City Museum has four floors and a rooftop with surprises around every corner. Adventurous souls may opt to careen along a 10-story slide between floors. Paige Rudd, a museum administrator and expert, is giving us an insider's tour. Paige, this is wild. Well, a lot of it comes from different parts of the city and served different functions before it showed up here in, at City Museum. A lot of this out here is steel and repurposed, more structural architectural pieces. But as we get inside, there will be far more significant historical architectural pieces, as well as a lot of sculptural pieces created by our founder and creator, Bob Castley. Well, this is a kid's jungle gym dream out here. It's adults, too. Yeah. This wasn't just built for kids. We're walking outside the museum's entrance beside a giant ball pit and series of wire and steel ladders giant slinkies and slides where kids are climbing and playing. Above this interactive sculpture playground, there are two old airplanes suspended in the air, which you can actually go inside if you dare to venture through the wire tunnels to get there. We make our way into the museum, which first opened in the 1990s, and head towards the roof, walking up a stairwell lined with colorfully painted rollers that you can spin as you walk up the stairs. So the rollers uh, that you see here, and they spin, uh, they were actually original to the conveyor belts that were part of the shoe factory. An old school bus, a giant whale, pinball hall, the world's largest pencil, and even a bank vault. I do believe I'm in one of the most interesting museums I've visited to date. Best of all, this is a museum that encourages travelers to touch, feel, climb on, and truly experience each element housed inside and out. So this is our Enchanted Caves area. This is one of the original areas to the building. Uh, the building was once a shoe factory, and these chutes you see here were used to bring the shoes down from one floor to the next to be worked on or to ship out. Okay. We now have repurposed them into spiral slides and now have two 10-story slides and one five-story slide. We also have an organ. It's a thousand-pipe organ, a Wurlitzer from the Tivoli Theater in New York. Wow, okay. It also, I, like, everywhere you go in here, there's something different or new that you definitely did not expect. Yes, on the bottom floors there's also the cave area where you can climb through different structures made of cement and there's all sorts of hidden tunnels and all sorts of different sculptures built by Bob and his crew. A lot of areas in this building have uh, been one thing for quite some time and then get repurposed into something completely different a couple yeah. months later or a couple years later. Paige says it so matter-of-factly, but I'm impressed. Just imagine trying to move and rebuild any of the pieces inside or outside of City Museum, and you'll be impressed too. You can get lost in tunnels and caves that wind through the museum on the first and fourth floors. What I find on the roof, though, blows my mind. There's a 3,000-pound praying mantis and a Ferris wheel. Uh, our praying mantis has an interesting story. It used to be at our botanical gardens. Uh, Bob designed it. And it was brought back here. It's actually at one point stood over our door and now uh, can be seen from many miles away. 
uh, as people drive into the museum. He's kind of one of our mascots. Watching over you. Mm-hmm. And the Ferris wheel, like, that's so cool. And the so Ferris cool. wheel. It's, such, it's so retro. It's a really neat view uh, from the top of it, definitely. It's a very gorgeous view. Another city museum mascot you can see from below is the hippo. If you're walking from any distance on Washington Avenue, uh, you can always see the hippo. And why the hippo? Was there, is there a reason behind it? or? Uh, the hippo is a recast from uh, Hippo Park in New York City, which Bob designed and built. An amazing mind and talent, Bob Cassily was a sculptor and entrepreneur who was born in Missouri. In the 1980s, Cassily was known for creating large, whimsical sculptures, like a 50-foot giant squid for the St. Louis Zoo. He brought the 10-story building that City Museum is housed in, which brings in hundreds and thousands of visitors each year. Castley passed away in September of 2011 while working on another big creative project. His legacy lives on through the remarkable City Museum. So Bob had this kind of theory that enough of anything could be used as bricks. So you have areas like the bottle walls and various spaces throughout here that use unconventional items to create walls or tunnels or climbers because not everything has to be used for its original purpose. Yeah, that's so, it's so creative. Everything's creative and just looking at it, it makes me think, it, like, it does open your mind. Yeah, yeah, everyone who comes in here ends up, you know, age two to 102. Kind of goes back to being a kid and getting to play and seeing things through a different light. And that's kind of what this museum's about. It makes me want to go home and redecorate. <laughs> Get really creative. Yes, definitely. <laughs> I'd like to see your house. <laughs> Mine's not as interesting as this place, I promise. <laughs> if you're traveling to City Museum, you definitely want to wear comfortable clothes and closed-toed shoes. I take some time to recline in a rotating chair and get a little dizzy before moving on to my next adventure. On my way from City Museum to the St. Louis Art Museum, I'm making a stop to see the iconic St. Louis Arch, symbolizing St. Louis's role in the westward expansion of the United States, and a monument to the vision of Thomas Jefferson. The tallest national monument in the United States, at 630 feet tall and weighing over 43,000 pounds. Standing below the arch is impressive. Another museum worth visiting in St. Louis is in Forest Park a large public park that's also home to the St. Louis Zoo and Missouri History Museum. We're visiting the St. Louis Art Museum. With a collection spanning the centuries, this museum has a variety of treasures to discover. Curator Judith Mann is introducing us to the museum and some top picks. So we're walking through galleries devoted to the ancient world, the ancient Near East, Greece, Rome. Um, this collection from the time it started in the late 19th century was devoted to covering all the cultures of the world, not just Europe, but uh, Oceania, uh, Africa, um, ancient Americas. And so this is uh, typical of the wide range of the collections at the museum. A uh, lot of wonderful uh, bronzes, Greek painting, uh, Greek vases, sculpture, busts, mosaics, all the kind of major parts of that type of art. And they're uh, installed sort of in groupings, uh, uh, things like this has to do with the kinds of things people would have in their homes. You know, we're a free museum and we really honor that idea that people can just poke in. You don't have to pay, so you can come in for 10 minutes, look at a couple things and go. You know, that's a nice thing and about this museum. And get ideas for decorating. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we often get asked about the wall colors. They're very popular and people have uh, used the reds, the blues, the greens that we do. Yeah. Judith leads me to a section that's a must-see for art lovers. The building we're in was built for the 1904 World's Fair. There were three buildings all of equal size that were built to house all the art. This is the only one that still survives. And now we've been collecting uh, globally, so all cultures from all over the world. But really what we're famous for is we're the largest collection of Max Beckmann paintings in the world. Um, we also have his drawings and his prints. Beckmann was here in St. Louis, so he has a really particular connection to the city. But along this wall in particular, there's some early paintings. In the middle is the wreck of the Titanic, is proven to be one of the favorites by St. Louisans because they really are interested in that particular event. Yeah, this is so dramatic and 
and, and big. Yeah, yeah, the large. And what I love is just the, the colors, uh, that beautiful blue, that beautiful blue-green, even though it's this tragic event, but the image is really quite uh, stunning. Yes, it is, yeah. And this space is great. There's, with the high ceilings and the right. works nicely spaced out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of the galleries have skylights, so this one has particularly beautiful light, so we enjoy that for these. And, and you can see these are large paintings, so they benefit from a large space. <clears throat> if you want to look in the next gallery, the painting that people really come to St. Louis to see is our uh, early, uh, uh, painting by uh, Henri Matisse, uh, The Bathers with the Turtles. Maybe we can go and look at that? Yeah. Okay. From arts in St. Louis to beer in Belgium to outdoor adventure in West Virginia and train rides in Santa Fe, New Mexico. I hope you are enjoying these episodes of the Travels with Darley podcast. And if you like to travel and explore or learn new things, please subscribe.